what's going on everybody this is john jake gaming on for my cure coming at you with a brand new episode of the ncsl dynasty here on ncaa 14 featuring the newest version of college football revamp as well we have a great opening week of season number three that is just about ready to come your way and the reason why i'm so excited in particular not only because it's the opening week of the season but also because we have four counted four top 25 matchups as well as other matchups throughout the country that feature other preseason top 25 teams a lot of football that's going to be coming your way shortly but before we jump into the action i hope you guys are excited for this series and for this episode in particular and if you are make sure you go ahead smack that like button for me hit that subscribe button as well if you do happen to be brand new to the channel but let's go ahead and not waste any more time and jump right onto the fields around america for today's college football action let's get it so let's go ahead and get the official NCSL season underway as number 13 Penn State is going to host the Indiana Hoosiers. Indiana coach by one of your guys' custom coaches and that is none other than Dalton Barentine. He's the offensive coordinator for the Indiana Hoosiers as right now this Indiana team is struggling a little bit. Down 10 to nothing already. Penn State trying to get another score on the board before we go into halftime as it looks like the Nittany Lions they only have that one timeout that they got to work with so they're going no huddle throw it across the middle and that's nearly a touchdown but gonna be marked down at the one yard line Penn State's gonna have to go quickly 10 seconds left Brown looks to left inside and it's gonna be caught by Lionel McCoy a touchdown for the Penn State Nittany Lions and they'll take a 17 to nothing lead into halftime and for the second half, it was not much better for the Indiana Hoosiers. They have really struggled through this game. Still looking for their first points of the season. And it looks like it's not going to happen through three quarters of this game. Matter of fact, it doesn't happen in this game at all, it looks like. As 23 to nothing going into the fourth quarter. Trent Brown looking for one more touchdown. And he's going to find an open Danny Davis and then Penn State's gonna win 33 to nothing the Hoosiers get absolutely blanked in the opener so now we go into the battle of brothers rivalry game this is a rivalry game that's been a little bit one-sided since the start of the NCSL series we've seen these teams play uh this is their third time playing in this series and Utah's won the first two so far can use Utah State finally get it done against their heated rivals within the state of Utah. Burden short coming up as Utah has a man in motion. Going to drop back the pass. Going to find Adam Fowler on the slant. He's going to break a tackle. So Utah gets the first points on the board, making it 7 to nothing, and going to work until we see this happen in this game. Oh, Bareford, he had him open, but just let it thrown up into the air a little bit too long. So that actually gets Utah State back into the game. And they actually have a chance here to take the lead. Robert Burnett is going to get them into a goal line situation here with four and a half minutes left to play in this first half. But on first and goal, they're going to run it with their tailback. Breaks away from one tackle and Joe Clean's going to score. Utah State is going to take the lead in the Battle of Brothers rivalry game. But it could be the only hold lead that they hold all day long as... After that, Utah is going to come out and answer with 21 unanswered points. And while Utah State will score yet again, it's going to be too little too late as the Utes will pull away in the second half of this game. 17-7 in that fourth quarter particularly as the Utes win the Battle of Brothers rivalry game. So now we get our first try box update as we have our first top 25 matchup of the season. Ohio State and Oregon getting ready to duke at it. But first, we'll check in on a couple of other games. Number 11, Washington first and foremost. Going to take on an unranked Pittsburgh squad. This would have been a ranked game last season. The Pitt, understandably, not in the top 25 to start the year after what they accomplished in year number two, which was absolutely nothing. 
they uh, couldn't do anything against FBS teams, but what they will do in their first game of the season is they'll actually take the lead against the number 11 team in the country. But that will not last long as we got a nice run over to the right hand side. We got Adrian Nicholas who's going to break the tackle. He's going to find his way into the end zone. And you could hear a cricket whistle here in this Pitt Stadium. Same stadium that the Pittsburgh Steelers play in, mind you. And it's a tie ball game. But it could be seeing Washington not only take the lead, but we could also be witnessing our first defensive touchdown this season. Can this linebacker go all the way? He does. Gets a little bit of a late hit. That should have been a penalty. But either way, Washington gets another seven points on the scoreboard. So Washington lit the lead for now, but Pittsburgh will quickly answer back. And we got an interesting ball game here. Back and forth affair here in the first half as we're down to the last 30 seconds. Looking over to the right hand side. Able to get it out to Danny Nicholson. He's able to get upfield. And hey, Washington still has a couple of timeouts to work with. But they will not be needing those timeouts after all because. Well, this quarterback's Adam Castillo. Well, he's going to be intercepted by Ryan Culver. So that allows it to remain just a seven-point game. And Pitt has a chance to tie, but Matt Mackey is going to throw yet another interception. It's been a sloppy game in this one in particular. Both teams turned the ball over multiple times today. This has been a, an entertaining football game, but also a sloppy football game as well as... We'll see uh, Castillo get his guys a little bit closer and more firmly entrenched in the red zone. So I'll have a second and short to work for you. Looks like they're trying to set up the screen. Screen gets set up. Got some blockers on the outside. And Andy Curtis is going to be shoved out of bounds. But not before picking up a few yards and making this a goal line situation. The Huskies will choose to go five wide as Castillo actually throwing the ball. He's going to find Danny Nicholson in the end zone. And that's a touchdown for the Huskies as that will seal the deal as they win their opener against the unranked Pittsburgh Panthers. So now we check in on number 12 Miami who was in the college football playoff last year. They'll be taking on an unranked Washington State squad as we'll open things up late in the first quarter. Miami already at this point in the game has a touchdown on the board. They're going to be looking to add on to that scoreboard here. I'm facing second and five as our quarterback's going to scramble on the option. Breaks one tackle, almost breaks from the second one. Marcus Amos nearly had his first rushing touchdown of the season, but he's going to be marked down the one yard line. But facing some adversity as a full star penalty. Backs him up a little bit, but it won't matter because Marcus Amos is going to run that read option yet again. And the execution on it, absolutely beautiful. They'll make it 13 to nothing as their kicker does somehow find a way to miss the extra point. You absolutely hate to see it, but this offense is certainly going to work, though. How about Cedric Ward? True freshman out of Louisiana. He makes a big-time catch in the end zone. Gets his first touchdown of his career. But Washington State still looking to score. They have been blank so far. Cornelius Gordon is going to change all of that, though. As he's going to run through a couple of defenders now. Washington State finally gets on the scoreboard. And just chipping away at that lead. This field goal will make it a 13-point game. So, Washington State not getting blown out. But they're not looking great either, right? It hasn't been a, a great day for uh, the Cougars of... Washington State Washington arrival has uh, handled their business already get a freshman custom signing with Tyrol Scoochie Wallace uh, he gets his third catch of the day uh, first one in red zone action and it looks like Marcus Amos he's just a tough kid man able to break some tackles consistently every time we see him with the option and the Miami Hurricanes roll in this one winning 50 to 10 at home against Washington State but now we got our first top 25 matchup in the entire season number three. We got Ohio State, who's ranked in the top 10. They're ranked number seven in the country. They go across the country to go play in Ott Sand Stadium to take on the Oregon Ducks, who are ranked number 17 in the country. We'll jump in late in the first quarter as... Oregon's actually able to get a big play downfield. This was a concern going into the season is 
if their offense is going to produce enough, that's a, a good sign getting a big play there. And Oregon will take the lead against number seven, Ohio State. And Ohio State in a hole early, down by 10, but they will get back into this game as Doug Crooks is going to catch the pass from uh, uh, the starting quarterback, who for some reason, his name completely escapes me. I, I don't know why I'm having a complete brain fart. Um, but don't see a lot of scoring in this game. This has been, remains a low scoring affair, but Ohio State will have a chance to take the lead and they will. Jonathan Sherman running like a Sherman tank as he's going to run by a couple of defenders there. And Ohio State is going to take the lead with less than seven minutes left. Beautiful job running that motion triple option and... Ohio State already has this game won, it seems like, but we'll see what they do in the final play of the game. They're actually going to take the knee, and Ohio State is going to come out victorious in that top 25 matchup. But of course, that is not the only top 25 matchup that we have in this game. LSU and South Alabama going to take uh, play each other later on, but we'll check in on Virginia Tech and Boise State first. They are opening things up right in front of our eyes right about now virginia tech a team that was uh pretty well regarded in the acc last year taking on a mediocre boise state squad so we'll see what virginia tech does here in year number three could be a sleeper team in a wide open acc conference but they're still in a close one with the broncos of boise state they're hanging around they're they're finding out we got a four point game on our hands and boise state even with a chance to take the lead too as our quarterback's gonna scramble, breaks the tackle, breaks the number one, gets through a third, and Jeff Owens is gonna score. Oh my goodness, a big time run by Jeff Owens. Boise State will have the lead, but with a minute left to play in the first half, Matt Haynes is gonna catch this pass from Jonathan Alvarez, and Virginia Tech will quickly reestablish the lead. But no mistakes here. We got a tight game on our hands. As we get deeper into this ball game, we're going into the third quarter of action. Back and forth. You could hear, the, you could feel the intensity in this stadium right now. As they might be going a little bit of Wildcat here. Quarterback's going to keep it at Jonathan Alvarez. Gets into the end zone completely untouched as well. Virginia Tech will retake the lead yet again. But Boise State looking to rally right back. Owens drops back. He's got a little bit of time to work with, but puts the ball on the ground. Virginia Tech's going to recover. The defense holds it down this time around. And Virginia Tech goes on, and they're going to win this game. A nail biter against Boise State. But Virginia Tech finds a way to win it. Meanwhile, we have a rematch of the MAC championship that we witnessed back in year number two as Tennessee will be taking on West Virginia this time around. Uh, this time, this is at West Virginia's uh, backyard in Morgantown. But Tennessee looking to create the same res result in spite of different conditions as Tim Randall's going to score the first points of the season for the Tennessee Volunteers. And while it's been a low-scoring affair, it looks like Tennessee is ready to pull away as Tim Wilson gets into the end zone completely untouched, might I add. And it's 17 to nothing already. And Landry, we're going to build upon that as he's going to throw it short to his receiver. That's Mr. Michael Austin himself. He only picks up a first down there as well. Gain of nine as he'll run the option with Tim Randrum. Not the, the most uh, speedy uh, of quarterbacks. Um, he's having a hard time uh, getting much on the ground. Less than two yards to carry. But, you know, it, he's making it work here in the red zone as he does find a way to get a second rushing touchdown of the day so tennessee blowing with west virginia's back out right now as the mountaineer is trying to find just some sort of offensive rhythm hopefully they can go ahead and find it here as west virginia looking for their first points of the season still it looks like it could happen with seven seconds left in the third quarter as dan bishop dives into the end zone so that's a touchdown for West Virginia. Makes it a uh, possibly a two-possession game, depending on what this quarterback can do. He got rid of the ball, but it didn't go to anybody. So 
A lot of work that the Mountaineers need to do if they want to get back into this game. But, hey, you know what? Tom Ostrander, he's going to certainly try to make things interesting now. I'm sure they'll go for the two-point conversion to try to make this just a 10-point game. Wolf Dudes are successful with that two-point conversion. This time around and finds an open Antoine Robinson. Suddenly, this game gets a lot more interesting considering that Tennessee does not score on their next possession. So, with West Virginia with a slight sliver of hope as Jake Sanders, oh my goodness, got absolutely lit up like a Christmas tree. But one minute left in the ball game. They're going to hand it off to the tailback. Definitely a risky strategy, but Dan Bishop is going to punch it in. He's got a touchdown. And now it's going to come down to this. The onside kick. Can West Virginia recover? And it's a decent kick, but Tennessee's hand steam. They do not sell. Tennessee is going to go ahead and recover the onside kick. And the Volunteers win the rematch of the MAC Championship. Winning by a field goal. So now we go into that second top 25 matchup that we have here in this particular episode as LSU, the number 10 team in the country. They will be taking on South Alabama. South Alabama coming in ranked number 22 in the nation. And these two teams being from the same conference, this could have some early uh, conference implications. Uh, both teams definitely could use the win as this has been a pretty well balanced conference overall very uh good competitive play in the sun belt but we'll see uh who can set the tone in this first week of the season and south alabama is gonna get things started first drive of the game they're gonna show that hey we are not afraid to play with the big boys at all danny weaver's just gonna casually get a 56 yard strike i mean yeah plenty of time in that pocket and drew walker exposes the LSU secondary on this particular play. So South Alabama already has the lead. We'll see what LSU can do. They're a little bit of a disappointment last season, but their offense will going to be on a higher level this year as Darius Brewer takes one down the sideline. A 30-yard run as now LSU will get to respond, firing into the end zone, and there is a one butt naked open Travis Franklin, the tight end, is going to punch it in for the LSU Tigers. Able to move calmly over to his right and finds a streaking Travis Franklin. And we got ourselves a good game on our hands down here in Mobile, Alabama. But the game remains tight for most of the ball game until, until we get into that second half. And then I saw something in the second half that I didn't think was going to happen when I was firing this game up. For this CPU versus CPU matchup. Uh, South Alabama is going to low-key dominate here in this third quarter. Already up 20-7. LSU trying to make a play. But it's going to take a safety. Derek Brown gets sacked in the end zone. What are we doing here? So South Alabama you know, got an extra possession off of that. Didn't do anything with it. But I'm sure their offense will not need to step on the field here. As Frank Quintrell just doing an absolutely beautiful job. A beautiful job of reading the eyes of the quarterback. He was looking uh, for the custom player uh, out of LSU. And it just didn't work out, right? He could not find his way into the end zone. That was Travell Banks in the sophomore that he was looking for, by the way. And the turnovers keep continuing. Derek Brown is going to fumble this ball, and South Alabama is going to recover. The Jaguars possibly thinking of dominating the second half. And oh boy, William Payne, the FCS transfer. How about what this kid is doing right now? Just going to work. Wow, that is absolutely incredible to see. Out of, um, also from uh, James Madison. He's a James Madison transfer. Uh, but 36 to 7 is going to be your score right here as LSU trying to just find something. They have not done anything on offense since the very first drive of the game. Hopefully, you finally see some sort of change after that. But here we are, second and four coming up as LSU dropping back in the pocket, throwing over to the left hand side, and he's going to be picked off. He's going to be intercepted yet again. It's a foot race down the sideline. 
Bro gets caught from behind. Brian Bush making a great break on the ball. And Derek Brown, he has been down horrendous today. That's his fourth interception of the game. His fifth turnover of the game. And South Alabama takes over with amazing field position. And they're going to punch it in yet again. Danny Weaver just having a brilliant day. Just not doing too much. Just letting the team around him go to work. And South Alabama is going to make a statement here. Winning 43-7. to What a score. But now we get into the mid-afternoon games as we now check in on TCU. They open up their season going up north to take on the final line eye of the University of Illinois. TCU still has uh, one of your guys' custom coaches, Jake Jacobs, who is in his second season as a defensive coordinator for TCU. But the offense not really doing much uh, for TCU. Just now finding their way into the end zone. Helps make it a field goal game. But the defense needs to come out and make sure. Keep the fighting line eye out of the end zone. And it's not looking good in that regard. Throwing towards the end zone. Tremaine Jones is going to be able to hang on. Make the catch. The fighting line eye will use a timeout. They got one timeout left as a couple of plays later. Paul Gordon. He's going to punch it in for the fighting line eye. And a good solid home performance so far for Illinois. As it looks like the Fighting line, I will always be that team that is keeping TCU at just arm's length throughout the game. This was not a good offensive day for TCU at all. 40 seconds left in the ball game. Jake Jacobs hoping that his offense can do something. Get a two-point conversion. And, oh, I don't know what that quarterback was looking at. Uh, but that was not it, Chief. That was not it at all. Uh, Illinois is going to win 23 to 7 in what was a overall pretty low scoring affair Now we have some studio updates our first studio updates of the season as we see Kansas State get a narrow win over SMU and then in other news Minnesota number 14 in the country they take down Arizona State and was a interesting ball game Golden Gophers is able to win by a touchdown to go ahead and ensure that they win 31 to 14. Also, we saw Old Dominion take care of business against Arizona as well. So a lot of good games happening around the country. Speaking of those good games, we have two more top 25 matchups for you. But first, we have another nationally televised game to bring to your attention. We got number five, Ole Miss who was a college football playoff participant, defending Sunbelt champions as well. Well, they're taking on the Bearcats of Cincinnati, just looking for their first uh, six-plus win, six win season uh, in this series. It's been a rough couple of years for the Cincinnati Bearcats. And judging by how this game is starting, it looks like it could be another rough year for Ole Miss, possibly, as Charles Rhodes was lined up one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. Nobody uh, didn't get that extra help in time. And so Ole Miss is able to build this thing up to a 17 to nothing lead. We could be looking at a possible route on our hands right now. As we cut in to midway through the second quarter, Archie with a chance to add on to the scoreboard. And Stefan Castillo was just sitting in the end zone. Just making it way too easy right now. So Cincinnati down by big and we're only... Like two minutes left into the first half, uh, left in the first half too. So there hasn't even been a lot of football happening. But either way, Cincinnati, they really need to get their act together right now. Trying to convert this touchdown. They thankfully do with Ed Keefe to cut it down to an 18-point game. Interesting to see if they decide to go for the two-point conversion or not. And sure enough, they will still go for the two-point conversion. Even though a false start brings them back to the seven yard line but how about this throw to greg irvin jesus christ that was a tight window somehow managed to fit that in there and after that cincinnati showing a lot of fight all of a sudden they're even though they looked outmatched throughout the course of this game they're certainly not going to give up a lot of pride in that cincinnati program it almost seems like the culture is changing uh, down there in the queen city as Cincinnati scores yet another touchdown. They opt to go for the two-point conversion yet again. Dropping back. Looks over to right inside. And the 10-toes-down movement 
is certainly alive and well. So it's, that makes uh, it a little bit closer of a game, but Ole Miss still going to make it pretty difficult for them to come back. They're down by 18 with four minutes left. This could be garbage time. Maybe this is one of those Cincinnati covers uh, through the back door uh, type of games, right? Could certainly have that type of possibility. But third and goal coming up. Cincinnati looking for their third touchdown in three red zone trips. And they're going to get it. Brad Jude is going to make that third red zone trip end in a touchdown. Plus, they're going for a two-point conversion too. Dropping back, Vaughn's looking for someone to get open, and he finds someone in the back of the end zone. So this could be a much more interesting game, depending on what Ole Miss does uh, with their very next possession, which they do drive all the way into the red zone themselves. I'm sure they wouldn't mind a nice little 40-burger. And sure enough, that 40-burger will happen with Eric Archie. So that makes sure that Ole Miss puts 40-plus up on the board. So Cincinnati could, uh, is probably done at this point. Down by 17, one minute left. Uh, they need nothing short of a miracle. Uh, and while they do score there, they don't get the onside kick. Great second half by Cincinnati, but it's too little too late, though. But now we have some exciting top 25 matchups. This ended up being where college game day went. They went to a neutral side kickoff game uh, between two teams that are both playing in the SEC. We got Florida State ranked number 16 in the country. They had a resurgent second half last year, but they're taking on the defending SEC champions, the Georgia Bulldogs. Well, big game. Big game for both teams to start this season out as Georgia is going to try to get the scoring started. And we got a couple of broken tackles on the outside. Andre Bryant able to force his way in, even though maybe he didn't have necessarily the best vision. He still found a way to get into the end zone there at the end of the day. So Georgia does take the early lead and they're going to look to improve on that lead towards the end of the first quarter. Bryant facing some pressure it was an all-out blitz with robert london completely but butt naked wide open so georgia with an emphatic first quarter leading 14 to nothing already it just raises a question can florida state keep up can they remain competitive in this ball game we cut to three and a half minutes left in the second quarter. Bryant looks to the run inside. He's got another big play down the sidelines. Got a receiver. Receiver is forced out of bounds, but Michael Bryant already picks up 47. Georgia is threatening once again. Ferdinand Long going over to run inside. It's intercepted. They tried to run the screen, and the screen is not going to work. Florida State is going to score. Touchdown, Seminoles. And Steve Coley finally gets Florida State on the board. And oh, did they needed that. Can you imagine the swing if he dropped that pass? Could be 17 to nothing instead in favor of Georgia. Instead, Florida State is right back into this ball game. And halfway through the third quarter, they have a chance to tie as well. Running their option. Getting it out to the big burly fullback who's all alone but is dragged down inside the five yard line Aaron Dodd with a big time run gets Florida State in a goal line situation very next play quarterback is going to run it in and it is the FCS transfer Daryl Bonniford Daryl Bonniford that guy right there getting it into the end zone you absolutely love to see it great run from the Nicholas State transfer as now Georgia's trying to get back into this game, trying to retake that lead. Does find Todd Neely in the back of the end zone. So Georgia is back ahead once more. But Florida State, I think, has certainly found that rhythm once again. So we'll see if 21 points is enough. As we see Florida State, and sure enough, they actually will respond. Aaron Dodd, the fullback, able to punch it through, running right through a defender as well Florida State now in a great position to win and all the pressure on Georgia needing to get in the field goal range second and short facing some pressure looks downfield one-on-one -on -one, and it's intercepted it is going to be intercepted it's going to be picked off actually a pretty good return too 
Andre Bryant could not bring it home. And Florida State, the Seminoles of Florida State are going to pull the upset. They take down the Georgia Bulldogs to start SEC play. Florida State wins 24 to 21. What a great Chick fil A quick off classic. But I personally believe that this is going to be the biggest game, not only of the week, but possibly the entire season. We got Texas, number two Texas, but I had going on the road, taking on number four Nebraska. And not only is it a big game just from that standpoint, we got the debut of George Gentry, the offensive coordinator from Nebraska, one of your guys' custom coaches as well, coaching in a big time game. Coming from Hawaii. He was at Hawaii in year number two. And looks like this Nebraska team is going to be tested early as the Cornhuskers already down 10 to 3 as they're going to hand it off to their tailback, who is a preseason All American, Tim Hayden, going to work and he's dragging a defender into the end zone. Nebraska is going to tie things up here in that second quarter of action. But we thought that we saw Texas was an absolute juggernaut when we saw them in gameplay last season, particularly the offensive side of the ball. Can this Nebraska defense do enough? They got 130 left to play in the first half. Going to go ahead, run the ball to their running back, who is going to punch it into the end zone. That's Trey Dixon, who gives Texas the lead once again. And unfortunately, Nebraska... Well, they end up going free and out, so Texas gets another extra possession as Chase Ingram has a bunch of time to throw this ball, and he'll find his receiver downfield. That gets Texas into the red zone. Should make this a much easier field goal attempt. Looking to be about 34 yards, and sure enough, they got that field goal attempt. So Texas takes a 10-point lead into halftime, but can... Nebraska hold it down. I mean, this is, hasn't been a great day for their offense. They are transitioning to a new offensive system, one that does modernize the Nebraska offense a little bit more to allow them to come back uh, if they were down in games. Uh, their offense last year was not necessarily built to do that, to say the very least. So this will be a good test of philosophy right here as Nebraska trying to drive down the field down by a couple of touchdowns got a big throw down the right hand side he's got a receiver huge play downfield oh nebraska needed that but they stall in the red zone though yet again that was a big problem in this game for the nebraska Cornhuskers. uh they were putting up yards in between the 20s but you know texas was able to employ that bend but don't break mentality Texas trying to do this or Nebraska trying to do the same thing, but it hasn't worked out yet However, we got a turnover big chance for Nebraska to get back into this game to make it a one possession game Here in the fourth quarter, but the quarterback is going to make Arguably the biggest mistake in this entire game This is gonna be taken all the way to the house and Texas is gonna score they're going to score a defensive touchdown. Cornell Smith going to be living in the in the nightmares of that quarterback when it's all said and done. Texas is going to make it a 34-16 game. A huge swing this late in the game. And they're not thinking about sportsmanship at this point. They are certainly not thinking about sportsmanship. Because uh, Texas is trying to send a message. Letting this nation know that, hey, you should have included us. In that college football playoff last year and we're not messing around this time around but even with six minutes left nebraska is certainly not going to give up even though it does look pretty hopeless at the moment william butler is going to get wide butt naked open down the sideline and just throwing that up right on the money so finally seeing this offense wake up a little bit able to uh score on that play they died on just the extra point, but they're still down by 21, though. Two minutes left, and again, another big play for Nebraska. This one is going to be yet another touchdown. Jeremy Jackson this time able to get open down the sideline and able to uh, get some more points on the board for Nebraska. At least bare minimum, make this score look, 
you know, just a little bit better than maybe how this game actually truly went. Because it seemed like Texas just dominated, particularly in the second half. Then will be uh, built up by Trey Nixon, who allows the Longhorns to put up a 50-burger in a possible game of the year. Texas is going to end up winning absolutely big. So now we have some more studio updates on our hands as we check around the country. Wake Forest is going to open things up against Florida Atlantic and the Demon Deacons do win a close one utilizing their two-head monster in the backfield. We also have Clemson going into action winning 41-28 led by their custom quarterback who was a, a uh, person that transferred up from a higher level. He had one more year of eligibility and that's counting this year. And finally, a close one between UCF and Texas State, but the Knights of UCF narrowly win this one. So a few more games that we have planned for today's episode as we continue our look around the country. First, we check in on the number 18 ranked team in the nation, the Florida Gators. They will be playing host to Georgia State, who is led, at least offensively, by their custom offensive coordinator, Joseph Fy Krakowski, the former running back from Georgia Southern, back when Georgia Southern was in the FCS ranks. But right now, it hasn't been a pretty season start for Georgia State, already down by a touchdown, and could be seeing Florida adding some points here very soon. And the first quarter coming up, down a 10 to 3, and Florida does indeed add those points onto the scoreboard. Florida able to extend this lead, making it 17-3. to The slump proving to be a little bit too much for the Georgia State Panthers right now, except this ball's on the ground, and oh, did Georgia State need that. Still going to force B.J. Peters to have a negative 11-yard run. So a lot of work for Florida that needs to be done as they're just going to go to the run game, trying to make this a much more manageable third down, and Matt Smith almost scores. They almost score off of that freaking play to make it inside the one yard line. BJ Peterson, because they're so close, because he's such a tough quarterback, well, he's just going to do a little bit of that Jalen Hurts of uh, quarterback sneaking. And Florida dominating in this first half, up 24 to 6 already. But in the third quarter, Georgia State trying to crawl back into the game. They're going to that ground game. Gabe Fleming is going to pick up six yards for the Panthers of Georgia State setting up first and going again do a toss play to the right hand side and Gabe Fleming is nearly going to score there an eight yard run so now goal line situation a lot closer next play different running back Richard Marks but the result that they are looking for a score on the board so Georgia State does draw just a little bit closer but this offense will need to be electric in this fourth quarter, if the Panthers of Georgia State are going to pull this upset off against the number 18 team in the country. And honestly, I don't think that is really going to happen, right? Jo Florida is going to win this game 34-13 to unless they can punch it into this end zone here. And okay, so Dave Cox at least punches it in, but the result is still the same. Florida is going to win. And they showed, at least in that first half, why they're a top 25 team. Now, that being said, we have number 8 Michigan getting ready to uh, go into action here. As number 8 Michigan is led by their quarterback, Fred Morris IV, who is in his final year of college eligibility. As here we are in the second quarter, Michigan still in a close one with Colorado State. But that might not last long as Fred Morris IV has all the time in the world. And he's going to drop a strike in the center of the end zone. Touchdown Wolverines. As Michigan is going to expand their lead on Colorado State. A former top 25 team themselves back from year number two. But this might not be that same team though as Michigan is currently dog walking the Colorado State Rams right now. As Colorado State down 21 to 3. Hopefully their quarterback can get him back into this game. Throws over the middle. And Colorado State gets their first touchdown of the season. To help cut this deficit a little bit. But still a quite the mountain to climb. As Michigan is not messing around. And finding out. Michigan is going to hand it off to one of their receivers. Who's going to be able to pick up the first down there. Gets them inside the 5 yard line. 
As now, first and goal for Michigan. Fred is going to hand it off to the tailback. Breaks one tackle. Breaks another one. Breaks a third. He's an absolute wrecking ball. Cohen Amiri selling his song because he's wrecking his way into the end zone. Touchdown Wolverines again. And Michigan extends their lead 28-10. to And Fred Morris, one of the best players in the country. He is going to pinball his way almost to a rushing touchdown himself. We'll see if he calls his own number again down by the goal line. Instead, they hand it off to the tailback who runs in unopposed. Michigan will end up winning convincingly, winning 49-10, to showing why they're the number eight team in all of college football. And now we go into the Texas Kickoff Classic this year, featuring the Stanford Cardinal and the Aggies of Texas A&M. As Ron Massey is going to get the scoring started for Stanford. Been a little bit of a unique game that we have saw. Is that Stanford already has a safety. But they're going to add a couple of touchdowns too. As John Daniels is going to get the 10 toes down moving. And he'll, he'll score in the end zone. And then with two minutes left to play. Scott Perry will score as well. It was an efficient day for Matt Rouse. Who didn't have to do much in this game. As Stanford quickly overwhelms. The Aggies of Texas A&M, 47-14. But our final game that we have in this episode is going to be USC. The defending national champions. They will be hosting the Dukes of James Madison, a former FCS school, looking for their biggest win in school history. However, it will not be easy as Ben Scott, who led this team to a national championship last year, well, he is back with the USC Trojans for his senior year. He opted not to go to the NFL. And here we go. USC with the lead here in the second quarter and looking to pull away. However, James Madison looking to make that more difficult as James Madison is going to continue to make this a game. Field goal there is going to cut it to just four with three minutes left to play in the first half. So now USC trying to respond quickly. Trojans. Dropping back, Ben Scott finds a receiver over the middle, and that's a big first down for USC. Ben Scott doing a great job examining the defense and being surgical like your favorite doctor as Nick Richard will finish that drive off as USC finds the end zone, gets another touchdown on the board, but James Madison with a few seconds left for this first half. Havon Cortison, one of your guys' custom players, they don't make this a touchdown, but it doesn't affect James Madison in the long term as they will punch it in a couple of plays later anyways. We still got a game on our hands, surprisingly. We'll see if that remains the case the entire game as USC does start with the ball to begin the second half as Ben Scott will throw over to the left-hand side. He'll make it first and goal after the completion there and then hand it off to nick richards who's going to run up the gut nearly gets into the end zone but it's going to be marked down just short marked down at the one yard line and now second and goal coming up different running back in the game it's tom salawis tom salawis is going to score for the usc trojans and they're back out by 11 once again james madison with their backs against the wall iron sharpens iron do they make diamonds? As now, uh, we have another carry for Nick Richards. He's going to pick up a few yards there. A gain of five. So a reasonable second and five. And yet another red zone attempt as Ben Scott quickly gets it out to the outside. And his receiver will be able to go ahead and do the rest. That is a first down for the USC Trojans. As they continue to try to build upon this lead. Trying to run it up the middle. And it's going to find his man. That is Tom Salawas in the end zone. Touchdown, USC. The Trojans make it 35-17. to 17. And let's go ahead and just make this a hat trick for Tom Salawas, who's going to score three rushing touchdowns in this ballgame. USC showing why they're the Fang National Champions, winning big against James Madison. But what about some of the other games that didn't get that same national attention? We'll go ahead and check around the league now as Navy, you guys know this from a couple of episodes ago, they got themselves a brand new head coach. And looks like this uh, new era of Navy football is off to a great start as Navy blows out Wyoming 52-14. to 
Remy Natalia is one of your guys' custom coordinators. Couldn't get much going on the day. But one man that didn't have that same issue was the offensive coordinator at Northern Illinois, Timmy Hammock Jr. He led Arkansas State to a 59-21 victory over Arkansas State. The Northern Illinois Huskies, they are off to an amazing start here in year number three. Speaking of hot starts though, we got a hot one from Iowa State as they put 45 up on the board against the Tulsa Hurricanes as Iowa State starts with their first win of the year, winning by 30 plus points in non-conference play. As for the Iowa Hawkeyes, they start the year out ranked in the top 20 and do just about what they were expected to do, actually showing a pulse on offense to start the season as they beat this FCS school 48-14 to start the year. As for the Eagles of Boston College, the Eagles were certainly soaring high to begin year number three as they torched Eastern Carolina 52-3. Boston College looking to erase their second half struggles in year number two as they look to build off of the overall success that they had in the previous season. As for the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors, they are without their custom coordinator, George Gentry, who's now at Nebraska, but the offensive prowess is still here for the Rainbow Warriors, though, as they open up with a 38-20 victory over the Ball State Cardinals. As for the Owls of Rice, they had an amazing year number two and look to compete once again in the Big 12 as they do so by killing the Kansas Jayhawks 43-21, proving that yes, their success in year number two might not be a fluke after all. Speaking of programs looking to prove themselves more so, how about UNLV? Being a borderline top 25 team last season, they start year number three off strong with a 55-13 victory over UTSA. As for Southern Miss, they start the season ranked number 23 in the country and confirm those expectations with this free touchdown victory over UTEP. Because of this, Southern Miss actually moves up a spot in the coaches poll after one week of football action. Meanwhile, the Nevada Wolfpack trying to get some money in the bank before they get into the meat of conference play. Doing so, they destroy Northwestern to start the season, 49-16 being your final score as the Wolfpack look to surge in year three. Speaking of some surprises though, how about the Cowboys of Oklahoma State taking it to Rutgers as Rutgers was a top 25 team to end this season. They don't seem like that same team as they lose by 30 plus points to this Oklahoma State squad. It's certainly a great win for the Cowboys. Of course, we also have UCLA who's looking to get back into the college football playoff once again. UCLA winning 45 to 17 as they take care of business against Mid-Tennessee State. We also have Auburn starting the season against FCS opponent Chattanooga. While the Mox gave up a pretty good fight, the Auburn offense was simply too much in this game as Auburn does end up winning 49 to 21 so that they can stay in the top 25. And then we do have an upset in the top 25 as well as Tulane is able to take it into overtime and pull the upset off in overtime. A low scoring affair letting the Green Wave win 19 to 16, but despite that, Tulane is still not ranked and Arkansas for right now will remain in the top 25. So we didn't really have any changes in the top 25. There's no new teams entering in or any teams that are departing the top 25 as of right now. So we'll go to the NCAA players of the week to see uh, the best performances of week number one. And we'll start on the offensive side of the ball. Senior quarterback Derek Anderson did a great job leading this Auburn offense to debut year number three. While it was just against Chattanooga, and Chattanooga is certainly not the best team in the world, Derek Alexander put together a great performance, 28 for 38, 380 yards, 6 touchdowns, he also had 21 yards on the ground, and then Marcus Henderson in Michigan's blowout win against Colorado State. Henderson was just all over the field, last year of college eligibility, he starts his year off right. How about 17 tackles to start your season? And to top it off, you had four TFLs, multiple force fumbles, and multiple fumble recoveries too. 
Marcus Henderson was absolutely ridiculous, and I'm sure that's going to catch the attention of certain NFL teams as well. So that is going to round things out for the inaugural week of a brand new season of the NCSL here on College Football Revamp, a new version of College Football Revamp, might I add. Appreciate the guys over at College Football Revamp for their continued hard work, but next episode, guys, we are jumping into another week of NCSL action. We will dive deeper into the regular season, see which teams are for real and who teams are might be pretenders in that top 25 so should be a good one hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did you could show me that appreciation by smacking that like button that helps me out with the youtube algorithm of course and if you're brand new and you made it all the way maybe it wouldn't be a bad idea to hit that subscribe button as well as we continue to grow this college football community so guys hope you guys are all out there having a good one take care everybody